Dear brothers and sisters, today I bring you a testimony that cannot leave you indifferent. We are talking about Maria Valtorta, an Italian mystic to whom God granted an extraordinary grace, the gift of mystical visions. Through her writings, Maria Valtorta recounted and described the entire life of Jesus, enriching it with extraordinary details and information. But today, we are speaking of another remarkable vision of Maria Valtorta, her detailed description of heaven. With her words, Maria Valtorta opens a window to the kingdom of heaven, a place we all aspire to reach, but that few have had the chance to describe with such depth and detail. Her words are not just a simple narrative, but a spiritual guide that allows us to taste the beauty and majesty of heaven in vivid detail. In this video, I will lead you through her vision, a description so vivid and fascinating that it will transport you beyond the veil of our earthly reality. I invite you to stay with us until the end, because this vision of heaven can inspire all of us to strengthen our faith and yearn even more deeply to share this wonderful experience for all eternity. Let us listen to Maria Valtorta's words and allow heaven to come to life before our eyes. I have seen paradise again, and I have understood what its beauty, its nature, its light, its song are made of, everything in short, even its works, which are those that from on high inform, regulate, provide for the entire created universe. As before, earlier this year, I believe, I saw the Holy Trinity. But let's go in order. Even the eyes of the Spirit, although much more capable of withstanding the light than the poor eyes of the body that cannot stare at the sun. A star similar to a flickering candle flame compared to the light that is God. Need to gradually get used to the contemplation of this high beauty. God is so good that even wanting to reveal himself in his splendors, he does not forget that we are poor spirits still prisoners in a body, and therefore weakened by this imprisonment. Oh, how beautiful, lucid, dancing, the spirits that God creates at every moment to be the soul of new creatures. I have seen them, and I know, but we, until we return to him, cannot withstand the splendor all at once, and he, in his goodness, brings us closer to it gradually. First of all, last night I saw what seemed like an immense rose. I say rose to convey the concept of these circles of festive light that increasingly concentrated around a point of unbearable brightness a rose without borders. Its light was that which it received from the Holy Spirit, the most splendid light of eternal love. Topaz and liquid gold turned into flame. Oh, I don't know how to explain it. He radiated high, high and alone, fixed in the immaculate and most splendid sapphire of the Empyrean, and from him descended in inexhaustible torrents the light. The light that penetrated the rose of the blessed and the angelic choirs and made it luminous with its light, which is but the product of the light of love that penetrates it. But I did not distinguish saints or angels. I only saw the immeasurable festoons of the circles of the paradisiacal flower. I was already all blissful and would have blessed God for his goodness when, instead of crystallizing like that, the vision opened up to broader splendors, as if it had come closer to me, allowing me to observe it with the spiritual eye, now accustomed to the first brightness and able to sustain a stronger one. And I saw God the Father, splendor in the splendor of paradise. Lines of most splendid, whitest, incandescent light. Imagine, if I could distinguish him in that sea of light, what must have been his light, which, even surrounded by so much other light, annulled it, making it seem like a shadow of reflection compared to his shining. Spirit, oh, how you can see he is spirit. 
He is everything, so perfect is everything. He is nothing, because even the touch of any other spirit of paradise could not touch God, the most perfect spirit, even with its immateriality. Light, light, nothing but light. In front of God, the Father was God the Son. In the garment of his glorified body, on which shone the regal robe that covered his holy limbs without hiding their indescribable beauty. Majesty and goodness merged into his beauty. The carbuncles of his five wounds darted five swords of light over all of paradise and increased the splendor of this and his glorified person. He had no halo or crown of any kind, but his whole body emitted light, that special light of spiritualized bodies, which in him and in the mother is intense and emanates from the flesh which is flesh, but is not opaque like ours, flesh that is light. This light condenses even more around his head, not as a halo, I repeat, but from his whole head. The smile was light and light the gaze, light pierced from his beautiful forehead without wounds. But it seemed that where the thorns once drew blood and gave pain, now more vivid luminosity transpired. Jesus was standing with his royal banner in hand, as in the vision I had in January, I believe. A little below him, but only slightly, as much as a common step of a stairway, was the Holy Virgin. Beautiful as she is in heaven, that is, with her perfect human beauty, glorified to celestial beauty. She stood between the Father and the Son, who were a few meters apart from each other. Elijah was in the middle, with his hands crossed over his chest, his sweet, very white, small, beautiful hands, and with his face slightly lifted, his gentle, perfect, loving, very gentle face looked up, adoring, at the Father and the Son. Full of veneration, she looked at the Father. She said no word but her entire gaze was a voice of adoration and prayer and song. She was not kneeling, but her gaze made her more prostrated than in the deepest genuflection. So adoring was she. She said, Sanctus, she said, I adore you, solely with her gaze. She looked at her Jesus full of love. She said no word, but her entire gaze was a caress. But every caress of that gentle eye said, I love you. She was not seated. She did not touch the sun, but her gaze received him as if he were in her lap, surrounded by those maternal arms as much and more than in his childhood and death. She said, my son, my joy, my love, solely with her gaze. She delighted in looking at the father and the son. And occasionally, she raised her face and gaze even more to seek the love that shone high, directly above her. And then her dazzling light of pearl made light would ignite as if a flame engulfed her to burn her and make her more beautiful. She received the kiss of love and stretched herself with all her humility and purity, with her charity, to return caress for caress and say, here, I am your bride, and I love you, and am yours, yours for eternity. And the spirit flamed more intensely when Mary's gaze intertwined with its splendors. And Mary returned her gaze to the Father and the Son. It seemed that, made a deposit by love, she distributed this. My poor image, I will say better. It seemed that the Spirit chose her to be the one who, gathering all the love in herself, would then bring it to the Father and the Son so that the three might unite and kiss, becoming one. Oh, joy to understand this poem of love and to see the mission of Mary, throne of love. But the Spirit did not concentrate its splendor solely on Mary. Great is our mother, second only to God. But can a basin, even if very large, contain the ocean? No, 
It fills and overflows. But the ocean has waters for the whole earth, thus the light of love. And it descended in perpetual caress upon the Father and the Son, enclosing them in a ring of splendor. And it expanded again, after having been beatified by the contact with the Father and the Son, who responded with love to love and spread over all of paradise. Behold, this was revealed in its details. Behold the angels, higher than the blessed, circles around the pivot of heaven, which is God one and triune, with the virgin gem of Mary at heart. They have a livelier resemblance to God the Father. Perfect and eternal spirits, they are lines of light, only inferior to that of God the Father, of a form of indescribable beauty. They adore, they emit harmonies. With what? I do not know. Perhaps with the palpitation of their love. For they are not words, and the lines of their mouths do not move their luminosity. They shine like still waters struck by a lively sun. But their love is a song, and it is such sublime harmony that only a grace of God can allow one to hear it without dying of joy. Below, the blessed. These, in their spiritualized aspects, have more resemblance to the sun and to Mary. They are more compact, I would say, sensible to the eye and impressionable to touch than angels. But they are always immaterial. However, in them, the physical traits are more marked, differing from one to another. So I understand if one is adult or child, man or woman. Old, in the sense of decrepitude, I do not see. It seems that even when the spiritualized bodies belong to one who died at a late age, up there cease the signs of the decay of our flesh. There is more grandeur in an elder than in a youth. But not that wretchedness of wrinkles, baldness, toothless mouths, and bent backs typical in humans. It seems that the maximum age is 40, 45 years. That is, blooming manhood, even if the gaze and appearance are of patriarchal dignity. Among the many, oh, how many saints and how many angels. The circles fade away, becoming a trail of light through the azure splendors of a boundless vastness. And from afar, from this heavenly horizon, still comes the sound of the sublime Alleluia, and the light that is the love of this army of angels and blessed trembles. Among the many this time, I see an imposing spirit, tall, stern, yet kind, with a long beard that falls to the middle of his chest and with tablets in hand. The tablets seem like those wax tablets used by the ancients for writing. He leans with his left hand on them, which, in turn, rest on his left knee. Who he is, I do not know. I think of Moses or Isaiah. I don't know why. Just a thought. He looks at me and smiles with great dignity. Nothing more. But those eyes, made to command the crowds and penetrate the secrets of God, my spirit becomes ever more capable of seeing in the light. And I see that with each fusion of the three persons, a fusion that repeats with a pressing and incessant rhythm as if driven by an insatiable hunger for love, the unceasing miracles that are the works of God are produced. I see that the Father, out of love for the Son, to whom he wants to give an ever greater number of followers, creates souls. Oh, how beautiful. They emerge like sparks, like petals of light, like globular gems, as I cannot describe from the Father. It's a ceaseless emanation of new souls. Beautiful, joyful to descend, to invest a body in obedience to their author. How beautiful they are when they come forth from God. I do not see, I cannot see, since I am in paradise, when the original stain tarnishes them. The sun, 
out of zeal for his Father, receives and judges ceaselessly those who, having ended their life, return to the origin to be judged. I do not see these spirits. I understand whether they are judged with joy, with mercy, or with inexorability by the changes in Jesus' expression. What a radiance of smile when a saint presents himself to him. What light of sad mercy when he must part from one who must cleanse himself before entering the kingdom. What a flash of offended and painful indignation when he must eternally repudiate a rebel. It is here that I understand what paradise is and what its beauty, nature, light, and song are made of. It is made of love. Paradise is love. It is love that creates everything in it. Love is the foundation on which everything rests. Love is the apex from which everything comes. The Father acts out of love. The Son judges out of love. Mary lives for love. The angels sing for love. The blessed Hosanna for love. Souls are formed out of love. Light exists because love exists. The song exists because love exists. Life exists because love exists. Oh, love, 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 I am annihilated in you. I rise in you. I die, a human creature, because you consume me. I am born, a spiritual creature, because you create me. Be blessed, 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 love, third person. Be blessed, 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 love, who are the love of the first two. Be blessed, 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 love, who loves the two who precede you. Be blessed, you who love me. Be blessed by me who love you because you allow me to love and know you my light. Dear brothers and sisters, what can we say in the face of such a manifestation of divine glory and love? Heaven is there, waiting for us, and it is made of what God himself gives us, his infinite love. Today, through Maria Valtorta's visions, we have tasted a fragment of that light, of that peace that awaits us if we persevere in faith and prayer. I invite you to reflect on this grand truth. Everything that exists, exists because of love. We ourselves were created out of love, and through prayer, we can draw ever closer to God. I urge you, with all my heart, to subscribe to our channel and become part of this community of faith and prayer. Together, we can grow in the knowledge of God's love, supporting one another on our journey toward heaven. May God bless you and be with you always.